Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we will also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Seva, and today, following your requests, we're going to investigate how to code and build your own GOSH model in Python without resorting to any Excel applications. And the packages that we'll need to build this code are, as usual, NumPy and Pandas to work with arrays and data frames respectively, Y Finance, that is a package that allows us to download financial data using Yahoo Finance API. We will also need Matplotlib PyPlot, and we'll import it as PLT for brevity, to visualize our results, the dynamics of volatility of our financial time series of interest, and how well it is approximated using a GOSH model, and to implement maximum likelihood optimization, something that you would do in Excel using Solver, for example. We will import the SciPy Optimize package that would allow us to use a wide range of various numerical optimization tools. First, having imported the packages, let's specify the sample of our study, and as usual, we'll stick with S&P 500. GSPC is the Yahoo Finance ticker for S&P 500 benchmark, and our sample would revolve from uh, year-end 2015 until the most recently available trading day, that is uh, 25th of June 2021, and again, for Yahoo Finance API to work, we would need to specify those as string variables and present dates in US format, that is, four digit years, two digit months, and two digit days separated by hyphens. Now we can download our data and we are only interested in closing prices so we can specify our API request as follows. We can use the Yahoo Finance download function specifying the ticker, the start end and the end date we have just implemented over here and uh, focus on closing prices of S&P 500 only. Then we can proceed to calculating returns from daily closing prices and to simplify our calculations we can convert this a pandas series into a numpy array and specify that we'll divide an array of prices starting from the second day until the very last day by the array of prices starting from the very beginning until the penultimate day and then we'll subtract one to get returns and that would be our area of returns that we'll work with and uh, use its volatility to estimate our gauge model and uh, to start uh, our gauge model estimation we need some base parameter values and um, as it is customary we'll start with our mu variable which which is the expected return the uh, average rate of return at a particular day uh, as a sample mean so we can just calculate the numpy average of the area of returns and our baseline value of the omega parameter, the unconditional variance, would just be the sample variance, which is the standard deviation of the return array squared. And uh, this specifies the constant volatility assumption, constant variance assumption, when uh, alpha and beta, the immediate persistence and conditional volatility persistence parameters are equal to zeros, and our mean and variance are equal to sample average and sample variance respectively. Then let's define a function that we'll call uh, gosh MLE for maximum likelihood estimation, and the argument of this function would be the array of parameters, which is called params here. And uh, it's very important to specify this properly because this would be uh, the pinnacle of our uh, maximum likelihood optimization later on. So uh, only specify the parameters that you would want being changed later on when you uh, specify the maximum likelihood uh, procedure. And uh, here we're specifying uh, our model parameters as um, uh, elements of this params array, which is the argument of our function again. And mu is the first uh, parameter, the first element of our array. Omega is the second, alpha and beta as the third and the fourth element respectively. And obviously if you wanted to code something more advanced than simple gauge, for example if you wanted to code a t gauge, then you would have a theta parameter which would be uh, another additional parameter in your model, but here we're keeping it simple. Uh, obviously if you wanted to estimate the simple arch model with no gauge effects, you could just remove beta from here and further calculations and the model will work just fine. 
then we can start calculating the uh, parameters that are relevant to this particular specification, uh, calculating long-run volatility, for example, given uh, particular parameter values. So that would be, uh, as usual, omega divided by 1 minus alpha minus beta, given as long-run variance, and long-run volatility would be the square root of that, so raising it to the power of 1 half. And then we can start calculating our realized and conditional volatilities day by day, using arrays where possible and using loops where using arrays would be problematic. So first of all, we can calculate our residuals, which uh, are used to calculate realized variances as just the difference between the array of returns and the expected return mu. Uh, then our realized volatilities would be absolute residuals and our uh, conditional volatilities we will start calculate right now. We'll first initialize an uh, array of zeros equal in length to the uh, array of returns, and then we'll start populating it with conditional volatilities calculated as follows. The very first element of the conditional volatility array, where we have no lagged residuals, no lagged conditional volatilities, etc., will just be equal to the long-run volatility we have calculated above, and then we'll move throughout this array iteratively using the loop for t in range 1, so we'll start uh, at the second element of the array, and we'll move until the very end. And then the conditional volatility uh, at day t would be equal to this uh, simple and well-known Gauche formula. Uh, the variance would be equal to omega plus alpha, the immediate persistence parameter, times squared residual uh, at the previous day, and then uh, accounting for the persistence in conditional volatility, we can add beta times conditional variance at the previous day, lag conditional uh, variance. And then, given that that is variance and we're dealing with volatilities, we can calculate the square root of the whole expression. And then, moving in this loop will allow us to calculate conditional volatilities for every single observation. Then, to understand how well this particular specification proxies the dynamics of uh, real-world volatility, we can calculate the array of uh, log likelihood. So, first of all, uh, our uh, likelihood function is just the normal probability density function. You can use a package like scipy stats to simplify this, this particular calculation, but again, this formula is short enough, so we can just code it explicitly uh, using our realized and conditional volatilities as arguments. So again, just to remind you, we first have got a term that is equal to 1 divided by um, the square root of 2 pi, and pi is a constant in the numpy package, so this comes in handy. And then in the denominator of this initial fraction, you have got the conditional volatility at a particular point in time. And again, here we're dealing with arrays, so this calculation is quite efficient. And then we are multiplying it by the exponent e to the power of, and again, there is a built-in numpy function that allows us to uh, do this on an array level. And uh, as an argument of our exponent function, we have got our uh, negative uh, realized variance minus realized volatility squared. And in the denominator, we have got two conditional variances, so two times conditional volatility squared. And then to uh, have our output of our Gauche maximum likelihood estimation function, we can calculate the log likelihood as the sum of logarithms of our uh, probability density function across all observations. And then we can return negative log likelihood simply because the scipy optimize package has got the minimize function, but it hasn't got the maximize function. But maximizing something positive is the same as minimizing something negative, so we can work around this limitation by just returning the negative of the log likelihood, and just keeping that in mind later on. And finally, having coded this function, we can maximize our log likelihood by coding a variable res for result, and using the minimize function from uh, the scipy optimize package, uh, inputting the function that we want to optimize, Gauche MLE, the starting parameter values, and here those estimations come in handy. So we start our starting specification of our params vector, which is the argument of our Gauche MLE function, is mean and variance for mu and omega, and zeros for alpha and beta. And then we will uh, specify the method that we want uh, scipy optimize to use to converge to optimal values, and here Neldra Mead 
is uh, working just fine. You can also try uh, other methods like Powell or SLSQP, but uh, here there is no need to go as advanced and Neldermeet can do the job. If you are uh, worried about the precision of your convergence, you can uh, use Powell instead, but it will make your convergence slightly slower. And then having optimized our uh, maximum likelihood, we can uh, retrieve the optimal values of parameters as well as the optimal value of log likelihood uh, by referring to various um, elements of the res function. Our optimal parameters are stored as x in, in the result variable, so we can just refer to them as res.x and then further breaking them down uh, by parameter. So mu would be resx0, omega would be resx1, and so on and so forth. And finally, our optimal log likelihood that we have converged towards is um, stored as res fun. But again, uh, fun for function, by the way. But again, uh, as we have returned negative log likelihood to avoid confusion, we can refer to negative float of res fun. And that would allow us to uh, track how well the model approximates real life uh, volatility dynamics. Then we can proceed to calculating the uh, parameters and uh, conditional volatilities for this particular specification over here. This is just a duplicate of something we have already coded above. And then we can plot uh, our uh, realized and conditional volatility uh, using uh, a line chart over here. And we can also build some interface that would uh, print our model parameters over here. So we'll just print our model parameters, long run volatility in this particular specification, as well as log likelihood. And now we can just run the code and see how well it does the job. So it performs quite well, quite fast. And we can see that uh, in this particular uh, sample, uh, we have quite meaningful, quite um, understandable values for alpha and beta of 0 0.26 and 0 0.72. Uh, note that they do sum up to around 0 0.98. So persistence is uh, quite strong, but uh, it is meaningful. So the parameter values, uh, in addition, they do not uh, give anything above one. And we can see that long run volatility uh, of daily S&P 500 returns around 1.5%, which is uh, by all means realistic. And here we see how the uh, GASH estimated conditional volatility in orange um, proxies, real-world volatility in blue, and we can see that the dynamics is captured quite well. And that's all there is for building your own GOSH model using Python. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.